Brahma said, Then those sages, my sons, Marishi, and others who understood my view, gave him suitable names. Daksha and others who understood other facts on seeing my face gave him a suitable place and a wife. The Brahmanas Marichi and others, my sons, decided on suitable names for the being and said thus, Since at your nativity itself you have begun to torment and bedevil our minds and that of Brahma too, you will be famous in the world as Manmata. You will be able to assume any form you wish. Hence, O mind-born God, you will be known as Kama too. There is no one equal to you. Causing elation in others, you will be known as Madana. Since you were haughty even as you were born, you will be called Darpaka, and your name Kandarpa will also become popular in the world. The collective power of all the devas will not be equal to yours. Therefore, you will have any station as yours, and you will be omnipresent too. Daksha here, the first Prajapati, will give you a suitable wife, O best of men, as you please. This girl of handsome features, born of Brahma's mind, shall become famous in the world as Sandhya. Since she was born when Brahma was deeply contemplating, the woman of lovely features will be famous as Sandhya. She will be as lustrous as the jasmine flower. Brahma said, Taking his five flower arrows, Kama decided on his future course, remaining invisible in form. His five arrows are respectively Harshana, delighting, Rochana, appealing, Mohana, deluding, Shoshana, withering, and Marana, killing. Even sages could be deluded and tormented by them. Kama thought like this, I shall make a beginning of my career as assigned by Brahma himself as my eternal task, here itself in the presence of the sages and Brahma. All the sages and Brahma are present here. They shall witness my resolution and performance. Sandhya, who was referred to by Brahma, is also present here. She shall be my mouthpiece. I shall test my power here, and then only carry on my work elsewhere. After thinking like this and deciding on his further activity, Kama fitted his flower arrows to his bow. Kama, the foremost of archers, stood steady in the posture of Alidha, the posture for shooting, the right knee advanced and the left leg retracted bent his bow almost into a circle and was ready to shoot. O oh, excellent sage, when the bow was kept ready by him, fragrant winds delighting everyone blew there. The enchanter then charmed Brahma and others, the mental sons, with several sharp flower arrows. O oh, sage, the sages and I were thus enamored, and we felt very great change in our mental feelings. We began to stare at Sandhya frequently, passion depraving our minds. Our lust was heightened. Truly a woman is one who increases passionate feelings. Making all of us thoroughly enchanted thus, he did not stop till all of us lost control over our sense organs. When, on seeing her, my vital elements became displaced. Forty-nine animal instincts, bhavas, came out of my body. She too began to manifest the instinctive gestures of side glances, pretenses of concealing feelings, etc., as a result of being hit by Kama's arrows when she was being stared at by them. Profusely exhibiting these emotions, the naturally beautiful Sandhya shone brilliantly like the celestial river, producing gentle ripples. O oh, sage, on seeing her, emotionally excited, I loved her all the more, despite the fact that I was the creator and my body was filled with dharmic features. All the sages, Marichi, Atri, Daksha, and others, O oh, foremost among Brahmanas, 
attained the stage of sensuous excitement. Seeing me as well as Daksha, Marichi, and others in such a situation, and seeing Sandhya engaged in her affairs, Madana continued to concentrate his attention on his activity. The work entrusted to me by Brahma can easily be performed by me, thought Kama justifiably. On seeing the sinful proclivities of his brothers and father, Dharma remembered Lord Shiva, the Lord and protector of virtue. Mentally meditating on Shiva, the protector of virtue, Dharma, the son of Brahma, eulogized Shiva with different prayers in his state of sorrow. Dharma said, O Mahadev, Lord of Devas, protector of virtues, obeisance be to thee. O Shiva, thou alone art the author of creation, sustenance, and dissolution. By virtue of three gunas, rajas, sattva, and tamas, thou assumest the form of Brahma at the time of creation, that of Vishnu at the time of sustenance, and that of Rudra at the time of dissolution. Yet, O Lord, thou art devoid of attributes. Thou art Shiva, free from the influence of the three gunas, the fourth being. Thou art beyond Prakriti. Thou art expert in various divine sports, yet without attributes and free from deformities and decay. Great Lord, save me from this impassable ocean of sin. My father and my brothers are now sinfully inclined towards me. Brahma said, Thus eulogized by Dharma, the great Lord, self-born Shiva, came there immediately in order to protect Dharma. Stationed in space, Shiva saw me, Brahma, Daksha and others in such a mental state, and so laughed mockingly. O best of sages, in the midst of his intermittent laughter, making all blush with shame, the full emblem deity spoke these consoling words. Shiva said, Alas, O Brahma, how is it that you were overwhelmed with lustful feelings on seeing your own daughter? This is highly improper for those who walk on the line of the Vedas. Sister, brother's wife, and daughter are like one's mother. A sensible man shall never look at them with a reprehensible vision. The conclusion of the path of the Vedas is present in your mouth. O Brahma, how is it that you forgot that under the influence of momentary passion? O four-faced deity Brahma, your mind shall always remain alert in fortitude. How did you undo it for the sake of dalliance in love? How is it that your mental sons, Daksha, Marichi, and others who practice yoga in isolation and see the inner light forever, have become enamored of woman? This Kama is a fool, deficient in sense, and ignorant of proper occasion. How is it that he has begun to torment them with excessive power? Fie upon the learning of that person whose wife draws his mind inordinately from steadiness and courage and immerses it in fickle reveries. Brahma said, On hearing these words of Shiva, I, the Lord of the world, perspired profusely in an instant on account of shame. Although the desire to seize Sandhya of wishful features still lingered, O sage, I curbed the upset senses, fearing Shiva. O excellent Brahmana, from the drops of sweat that fell from my body rose the manes who did not perform the sacrifices while they were living on earth, who shone like split calyrium, had eyes resembling the full-blown lotus, were meritorious ascetics, and were averse to worldly activities. These were sixty-four thousand in number, O sage, and the manes called Barheshads, seated on grass, were eighty-six thousand. From the drops of sweat that fell from Daksha's body, a splendid woman endowed with good qualities was born. She was of slender body with symmetrical hips. Her waist was well-shaped, 
Small curly hairs embellished it. She was soft in body with fine teeth. She had a shining golden complexion. In her body she was perfect. Her face shone like the full moon and full-blown lotus. Her name was Rati. She was capable of captivating even the sages. Excepting Kratu, Vashishta, Pulastya and Angiras, the six, Marichi and others, successfully curbed their senses and their activities. O oh, excellent sage, the virile seamen of the four, Kratu and others, fell on the ground, from which other types of manes were born. They were Somapas, Ajyapas, Kalins, and Havishmantas. They are all termed Kavyavahas also. They are their sons. The Somapas are the sons of Kratu, Kalins of Vasishta, Ajyapas of Pulastya, and Havishmantas of Angiras. O excellent Brahmana, when the mains Agnisvatas and others were born, they were assigned the task of Kavyavahas, taking the oblations and offering among the mains. Sandhya, who thus became the mother of the Pitris, served the same purpose as theirs. Since she had been glanced at kindly by Shiva, she became free from defects and devoted herself to virtuous rites. In the meantime, after blessing all the brahmanas and protecting virtue duly, Shiva vanished suddenly. I, the grandfather of the world, snubbed and put to shame by Shiva's words, turned my anger against Kama with a frowning face and knit eyebrows. O oh, sage, seeing my face and realizing my hint, Kama withdrew his arrows. He was so terribly afraid of Shiva. O oh, sage, then I, the lotus-born, became very furious like a strong blazing fire, seeking to consume everything. I, Brahma, then said, after playing this same trick on Shiva, Kama will be consumed in the fire of Shiva's eye and freed from his arrogance. O oh, excellent Brahmana, it was in the presence of the manes and the sages of perfect control that I spoke to Kama in this way. On hearing this curse of terrible nature, Rati's husband was frightened. He abandoned his arrows and became visible. O oh, sage, he spoke to me and my sons Daksha and others, even as the Pitris and Sandhya stood there listening. By this time, his arrogance had disappeared. Kama said, O oh, Brahma, why have I been so terribly cursed by you? O oh, Lord of worlds, I have not committed any sin against you who are reputed to follow the justicable path. O oh, Brahma, you have assigned me my task. I have only carried it out. Hence, this curse is not proper. I have not done anything else. You had said, All of us, I, Vishnu, and Shiva, are targets of your arrows. I only tested your statement. I am not guilty in this respect. O oh, Brahma, I, being innocent, this conditional curse, O Lord of the universe, is very terrible. On hearing his words, I, Brahma, the Lord of the universe, replied to Madana, who had controlled himself, trying to suppress him further. Brahma said, I cursed you because you have aimed at us, this Sandhya who is my daughter and me her father. But now I am free from anger, in this state I tell you, O Kama, do not be under any suspicion. Listen, cast off your fear. Be happy. O Kama, Shiva will reduce you to ashes in the fire of his eye, but he will give you another similar body afterwards. When Shiva takes to a wife, he himself will get you another body. After speaking thus to Kama, I, the grandfather of the world, vanished from there, even as the sages, my mental sons, were watching. On hearing these words of mine, Kama and my mental sons became happy and returned quickly to their abodes.